Hey everyone, I was in Ottawa a couple of weeks ago to check out the new O-Train lines 2 and 4 ahead of their opening in January. During my time in Ottawa, I checked out the construction progress of the O-Train Stage 2 project, a 45 kilometer extension of Ottawa's rail network across the city. Stage 2 of the O-Train began construction in 2019, and over the next couple of years will extend the existing Line 1, upgrade Line 2, and create two new rail lines, Line 3 and Line 4. It only takes a few minutes on the O-Train to realize that Ottawa has a well-used transit system. I rode Line 1 at all times of the day during my trip, and it was always busy. The bus network also has strong routes, although very commuter-oriented. The bus-only transitway serves as the backbone for the rail expansion, converting BRT corridors to higher-capacity, higher-quality rail stations. Line 2 and 4 are very different compared to the existing O-Train, and use heavy rail vehicles, both Alstom Cordia Lint and Sadler Clerk trains while Line 1 and 3 will use Alstom City to Spirit. Opening on January 6, Line 2, or the Trillium Line, reopens. It's been upgraded with more double-track sections to allow for higher frequencies of every 12 minutes. More stations have also been added, and the existing ones were renovated to fit longer trains and include more high-quality amenities. Seven new Stadler Flirt trains were ordered to serve Line 2, in addition to some of the existing Alstom Cordial Lint trains, which will also serve the brand new Line 4 Airport Line, also opening on January 6. Line 4 includes two new stations in addition to the new South Key station on Line 2. The airport station requires a very short indoor walk directly into Ottawa's International Airport and includes lots of indoor seating inside the station. All of the stations on Line 2 and 4 have several enclosed waiting areas on the platform, all with heating. It really sets these two lines apart from Line 1 and 3, which feel much colder because they don't have enclosed platforms. You can check out my more detailed video of both lines if you haven't already. Most likely opening sometime next year, Line 1 is being extended east five stations from Blair. Tracks and catenary wires are in place between Line 1's current terminus, Blair, and the future terminus, Trim. Testing is also underway on this section. The first station east of Blair is Montreal Station, tucked in the middle of Regional Road 174. On both the north and south side of Montreal Road, there will be stations for Montreal Station. Fare machines are currently being installed on both the sidewalk and inside the station. Entrances are also relatively small, with just enough space for stairs up to the platform. Line 1 will operate in the middle of Regional Road 174 for the entirety of the eastern extension, linking major destinations and connecting to many bus routes that currently use the highway as a trunk line, all while being cheaper to build. But building transit and highway corridors also has a few downsides. My biggest issue with transit lines along highways is the hostile access for pedestrians and cyclists. It's always going to feel and be more dangerous to walk across highway exits with lots of cars to get to and from station entrances than a station that's not next to a highway. Credit where credit's due though, alongside construction of the eastern extension, protected intersections, shorter crosswalks, and wider sidewalks and bike lanes have all been built which improve the experience for anyone walking or cycling and are certainly much better than most things being done in Toronto. Moving over to Jean d'Arc Station, the two entrances straddle a smaller road, which feels less hostile than Montreal Station, and the station structure is largely complete, but some amenities like Presto machines still need to be installed. Convent Glen is the only station on the east extension that the current rapid bus routes don't serve, providing better access to the residential areas surrounding the station. Place de Orleans is arguably the most substantial station, with multiple pedestrian bridges and entrances straddling the highway. The station links the Park and Ride, Champlain Street, the Bus Terminal, and Place Orleans Mall, and construction of the station entrances and station platforms seems to be largely complete, although Presto machines are still being installed. The new bridges also appear finished with signage installed. Hopefully, the existing bus terminal and bridge will get a bit of an uplift as they're starting to show their age. Passing the 3km gap between Place Orleans and Trim, another part of the project, anti-climb barriers on bridges above the light railroad corridor, become visible. At Trim Station, finishings at the entrance buildings seem to be wrapping up. Fair gates and signage have been installed. Trim Road was also realigned a couple of years ago and is now significantly safer for pedestrians and cyclists by increasing protection from vehicles, especially at intersections. Moving across the Confederation Line to its massive western terminus, Tunis Pasture, buses leave every minute, feeding riders from the O-Train to West and South Ottawa. Tracks have been laid from Tunis Pasture Station to Westboro Station. The West Extension adds 15 kilometers to the O-Train network and creates Line 3, which will run between Trim Station and Moody, sharing tracks with Line 1 until Lincoln Field Station, where Line 1 will branch south with stations at Iris and Algonquin, currently named Baseline on the transitway. 
Back to Westboro, the station still has a ways to go. The structure has been built, but all of the exterior and interior works are still needed, as well as construction of the platforms. West of Westboro, construction of the track bed is wrapping up in preparation of tracks being laid. Kichu Zibi, formerly known as Dominion, is farther along than Westboro, with many exterior details in place. Platform construction is also farther along, and crews were testing the rails when I was filming. Just past the station, the tunnel portal can also be seen, which will bring trains into the tunnel underneath Richmond Avenue, an area with lots of high-density housing and shops. Sherburn is the first station under Richmond, and although this section is tunneled, both Sherburn and New Orchard will be open trench stations. Glass and other paneling works has started to take place at both Sherburn and New Orchard stations. Back on the transitway is Lincoln Fields. It'll be one of the largest stations on the network with three tracks and platforms, along with a new bus terminal. Exterior work at the station entrance appears to be complete, and the flyover where line one and three will split off is also built, but catenary poles and wiring still need to be installed. After branching off of line three after Lincoln Fields is Iris Station, which is making significant progress with platforms largely complete, tactile strips have been installed, and some signage has also gone up. Construction of the two staircases, which will link Iris Street with the platforms, is also well underway. South of Iris, this transitway has been closed, with buses rebooted, although the transitway is still operational between Iris and Lincoln Fields, running parallel to the LRT corridor. Permanent fencing is also starting to go up along the rail corridor. At Algonquin Station, currently known as Baseline on the bus network, both station entrances are coming along, signage and finishings are being installed at ground level, and both entrances are starting to look close to complete. The structure for the bridge connecting Algonquin College's Building for Construction Excellence to the station has been built, but finishing details still need to be installed. North of Algonquin Station, tracks have been laid, and a staging site for construction is also located at Woodruff and Baseline. Overall, construction between Lincoln Fields and Algonquin is well underway. Tracks are installed, and the stations are starting to take shape. The support bases, which will hold catenary poles, have also been built, meaning the overhead catenary poles and wiring to power trains should be installed soon. Line 3 will open alongside the rest of the West Extension, providing rail access to West Ottawa, as well as serving downtown and the eastern side of the city. Line 3 will use the same Citadel Spirit Light Rail vehicles as Line 1, and will be represented by a gold line roundel. The elevated guideway just past the flyover near Lincoln Fields has been built, but the, the overhead catenary system still needs to be built. Construction of the station and pedestrian bridge at Queensview Station is well underway. At Pinecrest, tactile strips and digital displays have been installed at platform level, and most of the exterior finishes have been installed. Construction of the bus bay will likely begin soon. Bayshore Station will connect to the existing transitway station, where the bus platforms are currently being upgraded. A new entrance building has also been built, along with bridges linking the entrance, Bayshore Mall, and both bus platforms and Line 3 platforms, where overhead canopies are being built. Moody is the last station on Line 3, and progress seems to be coming along. Aside from the highway interchange, there's almost nothing close to the station, and considering the station's setback from Moody Drive, most ridership will likely be from feeder buses. On the west side of Moody is the new Corkstown Yard, which will increase the capacity of the O-Train fleet and allow train storage on the western side of the network. Three light rail vehicles have already been transported to the yard, and testing will begin once overhead wires are installed and energized. The Gatineau-Ottawa Tramway isn't part of O-Train Stage 2 or OC Transpo at all but could become a rail link between downtown Ottawa and Gatineau in the future, connecting two provinces with light rail. Millions of dollars are going into the studies for the project, and a contract for initial planning works has been awarded, with studies expected to begin in the spring. The project is still in the early stages, so station locations and routing information hasn't been finalized. Ottawa's rail expansion hasn't been talked about nearly as much as mega projects in Toronto or Montreal, but in the span of about eight years, Ottawa will have opened four rail lines. It's not a perfect system, but the expansion of a faster grade-separated rail system, especially in a short time, is a great accomplishment for the system. Ottawa still has a heavy focus on commuter-oriented bus routes, with many of the trunks being replaced with the O-Train network, 
Frequency on the suburban branches of the bus network will hopefully be increased to improve access to the stations farther from the city center. It's also really impressive how many protected intersections and pedestrian-friendly streets are being built near stations across Ottawa. Several stations along the existing section of Line 1, including Bayview, an interchange station with Line 2, border undeveloped land. Hopefully more transit-oriented development will occur in the city, but it's smart that these routes are being built before the development, which saves on construction costs. Line 2 and 4 open this coming Monday. The east extension should open later this year, and the west extension in late 2026 or 2027. I'm excited to see what Ottawa does next.